Hey everyone, this is the continuation of the previous video on the shocking theories which proves the signs in the Hindu mythology. Let's start the video. But before that, I request you to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that I can bring more exciting ones like this. If we look into ancient texts, we can find a number of references to time traveling. In Hindu mythology, there is a story of King Raivata Kakudmi who travels to meet the creator Brahma. Even if this trip didn't last long, when Kakudmi returned back to earth, 108 yugas had passed on earth and it is thought that each yuga represents about 4 million years. The explanation Brahma gave to Kakudmi is that time runs differently in different planes of existence. Similarly, we have references in the Quran about the cave of al kaf The story refers to a group of young Christian people who in 250 AD tried to escape persecution and retreated under God's guidance to a cave where God put them to sleep. They woke up 309 years later. This story coincides with the Christian story of the seven sleepers with a few differences. In Hindu lore, there is an interesting account of how the sacred river Ganga, which has its origins in the Himalayan range, actually rose. In Ramayana, it is stated that the river rose from the skies and finally came down to earth in the form of a terrestrial stream that has the power to rid us of worldly sins. In this vision, the river's pristine presence in the universe may still be seen as the Milky Way, which is known as Akash Ganga or the Celestial Ganga. We note that this is perhaps the first instance in history where one put forward the idea of a material something reaching us from the stellar world. The extraterrestrial origin of meteors was not discovered until the 18th century. And it was only in the 20th century that became aware of the ceaseless shower of cosmic rays which reach us from the sun primarily but also from beyond our solar system. Going into the history of the Indian subcontinent and the ancient signs that prevailed the hypothesis of Vimanas existed comes close to true. The Vaimanika Shastrata of Maharshi Bharadwaja gives description of aircrafts that are much more advanced than our present generational aircrafts. According to the Drona Parva, Vimanas are described as shaped like a spear and can move along at great speed on a mighty and generated by Mercury. Vana Parva describes about Arjuna's arrival at the city of Indra, also known as Amravati, wherein Vimanas are mentioned. Two lines of Hanuman Chalisa computes the distance of Earth from Sun with great simplicity and that too, quite accurately. Juk Sahastri Yojan Parbhanu, Lilio Tahi Madhur Fal Janu. This means that Sun, mentioned here as Bhanu, is at a distance of Juk Sahastri Yojanas. A Juk Sahastri Yojana, this is a calculation of distance unit in the scriptures. In the 17th century, two scientists, Giovanni and Richer, have calculated the distance of Sun from Earth accurately and real close at 140 million kilometers to now officially declared figures. Consider the story of Usha and Chitralekha, which appears in Srimad Bhagavatam. The beautiful princess Usha, single and longing for love, had the experience of a handsome youth in her dream one night. The dream was interrupted and she woke up and exclaimed, O oh, beloved one, where are you? She confided the dream to her close friend, Chitralekha. Chitralekha said she would find who the young man was and get him to her. But how was she to recognize him? Chitralekha began to draw a series of faces and asked Usha if any of them resembled the man of her dream. Usha came upon a drawing which was of Aniruddha, a grandson of Lord Krishna. That night, Chitralekha transported herself to Dwaraka where she found Aniruddha. 
two aspects of today's world are implicit in the story. First, there is the idea that one can identify an unknown person through sketches, a matter that is routinely done in criminal investigations. Then, of course, there is the notion of teleportation. The natural question that comes up is that if this were so, where did all that technology vanish? The Mahabharata war was nuclear in nature and the use of all those divine astras led to the decimation of not only a large portion of the world population but also the technology and civilization progress that mankind had achieved till then. Imagine if such a war breaks out today, what would be the condition of humanity in the decades to come? Well, that's it for today. I hope you're liking Nerdy's discoveries. Can't wait for the next video to learn more and be fascinated about. See you on the next. Bye.